Okay, welcome to another lockdown uh, lesson. Uh, GCSE, Key Stage 3, Canon 1, Distance, Speed and Time here. We're going to do this potentially a bit of a different way to how you've done it before in science and everything and it works a lot more, it works a lot better in the GCSE exams and helps you understand it better as well. So we're not going to be using that formula triangle that you might have seen before, okay? We're going to be using really just some proportion and common sense. So it's going to be quite a bit different, there's going to be a lot less to remember because a lot of people when you use that formula triangle you get mixed up where D, S and T go. So that's one thing that's a problem with it. The other issue is when you divide by things with time, because there's 60 minutes in an hour, it becomes very complicated. Your calculators don't deal well with it at all. So we're going to look at it a very different way and this works really well in all the GCSE questions. Okay, so to start with, some warm-up questions. So five questions there for you to have a go at on your paper, your whiteboards, whatever you're using at home. Uh, give you about five minutes to go through that and then we will go through those answers. If you are, depending what year group you are in, you might not have got to all of this yet. That's absolutely fine. Just do the ones you can do first and then go back to the ones that you're not sure about. Okay, you might not have covered all of these topics yet. Okay, as always, any questions, let me know in the chat. If you want to shout out as well, let me know. I'm glad to give those out, but make sure you put your name down as well. Hello, Daniel again. Wow, Chris, you're listening with three children. Good luck there. Hello, Chris. Okay, if anyone will just turn up, we're just doing the five warm-up questions first, and then we're going to get into our distance, speed, and time. And as I said, the people are going to be doing it in a bit of a different way to what you've seen before. To me, it makes a lot more sense doing it this way. It's a lot less confusing. And it helps you with loads of other things in maths as well with your ratio and proportion work. Okay, if you've got any problems with these as well, you can put a message on the chat and I will get back to you, not a problem. Careful with question two, I've seen that one answered wrongly so many times, so many times question two. Think carefully about it, have you definitely got it right? Another big one for me as well, a triangle. Always comes up, really important shape to be able to find the area of because you can make all other shapes with triangles really because that's a three-sided shape. In terms of straight line shapes, that's the simplest one you are going to get. Number five, I've chosen some tricky questions this time. Question five as well, lots of negative numbers involved there. Really important topic to be happy with negative numbers. We might come to that as a full lesson one time because they're just difficult to deal with.
Okay, right, let's go through these, don't worry if you have not done them all. So, first question, tomorrow we get 16 out of 20 in the test, what percentage is this? I would always write it down as a fraction first. So you write down your 16 out of 20, and then you want to put that as a percentage. Percentage means out of 100. So you want to use an equivalent fraction to get it so it is out of 100. So to get from 20 to 100, you are going to times it by 5, times the top by 5 as well, which gives me 5 times 16 is 80, and we know 80 out of 100 is 80%. Okay, so that works quite nicely if you do it that way there. Question 2. Okay, so 0 0.3 squared means 0 0.3 times 0 0.3. 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 is going to be something to do with 9, but you've got to then, if you did 3 times 3 would be 9, we've got to divide it by 10 for that one, and by 10 again. So you're going to divide it by 10 twice. So it's not 0 0.9, it's 0 0.09. Okay, so two decimal places, two decimal places there, one, two, two decimal places there. So you can use that as a check. Question three, to find the area of a triangle, it is base times height, and then you've got to halve it as well. You've got to half your triangle. Okay, so easy to forget to do that. Okay, now you've got to remember it. So six times eight equals... 48, then you've got to divide it by 2, which gives you 24, and don't forget your units, 24 centimetres squared. Okay, you've got to remember how to half it, you must remember. Okay, question uh, 4 here, 3 sevenths of 56. So 3 sevenths of 56, I would always use a bar for these kinds of questions. So I'm going to split my bar into sevenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm dividing 56 by all of it. 56 is all of that. So 56 divided by seven gives me eight in each box. And then I want three sevenths of that. So three sevenths is three eighths, which gives me 24 pounds. And finally, question five, some very difficult negative numbers. So negative two goes in there and six goes in there. So we end up with three times negative two, which is negative six. I've then got to take away two lots of six, which is 12. Negative six, take away 12. We are already on minus six. We're going down even further. So it's going to go to negative 18. So five questions there. Not the easiest, but still the kind of ones you need to be getting correct all the time. The ones you need to be confident with in your GCSE exam, the ones that come near the beginning and you're thinking, whether I want a grade 3, 4, 5 or higher, I need to be making sure I get questions like that correct. Okay? Right, so on to the main part of the lesson now. We are looking at distance, speed and time. So we're going to look at answering direct proportion questions using proportion tables. That's what this is all about, even though it says it's a different topic there. We're going to use these methods to calculate distance, speed and time, and then solve some complex distance, speed and time problems, particularly on the exam questions there. There's some really tough ones on this, and thinking about it this way helps you with those massively. So, first question I've got, a brand of bananas there, top bananas. Banana prices, it's 500 grams for 80 pence. I want you to think, can you work out the cost of any other amounts? So we know 500 grams cost 80 pence. I want you to write down, you can put them on the chat, at home, anything you want, any other amounts of bananas you can work out the price for. Assuming it is the same all the way up, there's no special offers. So you know 500 grams equals 80p, what other, what other amounts can you work out? Okay, put them on the chat, or you can write them down, totally up to you.
I got some good ones coming up here. Okay, some have gone up, some have gone down, some have converted two kilograms. One kilogram, one pound sixty is great. Two hundred fifty grams is forty p. Fantastic work, brilliant. Okay, let me get my. Uh, four, five. Okay, so you've got loads of ones you've got there, which is fantastic. So I'm going to give you the actual challenge question now. But this is what you want to start doing. On these kinds of questions, just write down different ones you know. So the challenge question is this. How much would it cost for 1.75 kilograms? How much would it cost for 1.75 kilograms? Use the information you've got, that you've already written down, the things you've worked out, and see, can you get to 1.75 kilograms? This is such a useful technique for these kind of problems and for your GCSE exams. They love putting things like this in at the moment. Wow, we've got loads of people going really high up on this. Fantastic. So we're going for 1.75 kilograms now. Can anyone find 1.75 kilograms? If you haven't worked out already, I like to convert everything, so I would like to, I would put it as 1,750 grams. I don't mind going between units. You can either go all in kilograms or all in grams. I prefer grams because I want to avoid decimals. I think you can make mistakes with decimals. Okay, some really good answers there. Fantastic work. Okay, excellent. Right, I'm going to show you how I would get there now. So I would start with 500 grams, and I would say, well, I'm trying to get to 1,750 grams, so I'm going to find 1,000 grams first. You might not have done it this way. So 1,000 grams is going to be pound sixty. Okay? Right. I'm going to get as close as I can, so I'm going to add another 500 grams on. So I'm going to do 1,500 grams, which is going to be these two added together, which is £2.40. So I now need 250 grams more. I'm nearly there. But I can spot here, I've got 500 grams there, so to get 250 grams, if 500 grams is 80p, 250 grams will be half of that, which would be 40p, and then I can add my 1,500 and my 250 together to get my £2.80. Now there's other ways you could do that. Maybe you found 250 grams straight away and worked your way up to 1,750. It doesn't really matter as long as you can do this without a calculator. Because they're often on the non-calculator papers, so you're using these kind of techniques. Okay, so that's £2.80 for the bananas there. So however you did that is absolutely brilliant. Okay, so let's have a look at another one similar to that. That's just, again, how I would set out this nice uh, ratio table there. It's such a good way to work it out. You can do any other working out you want as well. But a nice table like that is a brilliant way to, to just start to get to the answer. If you're not sure how to get there, just work out as many values as you can. You might have found that help you. The one when I just said randomly, come up with any ones you want. That might have helped you in this question. So let's say we got another question. This time I've got my shaky shakes. 300 millilitres cost 90p. How much would it cost for one litre? And here I've got raisin snack boxes, 12 boxes for £1.80. How much would 30 boxes cost? Okay, so two questions to have a go at. You might be thinking, what on earth has this got to do with distance, speed and time? You will see in a bit. If you can do this, you can do the distance, speed, time questions. Okay, so two questions to have a go at there. Think about how you're doing it. Think about setting out like that. It's a really nice way to show you're working out.
So I'm there, I've got my, uh, my six-year-old doing some uh, creative writing in the other room. Okay, how are we doing with these ones? Looking good, looking good. Can I give you 30 seconds more, then we'll go through some answers for these. set it out like this, give myself some space, put my answer at the bottom I want, that's what I'm trying to work out, and then we've got 12 boxes, and I'm trying to get to 30 boxes. Okay, well, let's have a look. So, I shake your shakes first of all. I'm trying to get from 300 millilitres to 1,000 millilitres. So, I'm thinking, well, I can get up quite high, but you know what? I'm going to go straight down to 100 millilitres straight away. I think that's the easiest way to do this. So, 100 millilitres is going to be a third of this divided by three. So, I've got 30p. Okay, then if I want to get 1,000 millilitres, I'm going to be times in by 10, aren't I? Times by 10 is going to give me... 300 pence or three pounds. So three pounds for my shaky shakes, for my one litre of shaky shake there. For my 12 boxes, okay, more difficult, more difficult numbers. I'm trying to get to 30 boxes. So I might say, well, I can get 24 boxes quite easily by doubling this. So 30, 24 boxes is three pound 60. Okay, so I need six more boxes. Now, six boxes is nice and easy because I've got 12 boxes, so I can half my 12 boxes to get 90p. Then I can add those together to get my 30 boxes because 24 and 6 is 30, which gives me £4.50. So £4.50. Oh, what about the one there? Have I done something wrong? No, that's right, yeah. £4.50. Okay, so think about how it works by doing that there. Uh, so we've got £30 written down there for that one. Think about your units that you're doing there, okay? 30p times 10 is definitely not £30. That is a very expensive milkshake. Think about whether your answer makes sense as well. If it sounds too expensive, it probably is too expensive, both in real life and in your GCSE exams. They're not going to trick you with a stupidly expensive milkshake, so make sure your prices sound reasonable. It's another good reason why you should help out with the shopping and things, go around and get used to what stuff costs. If you're not sure about the, the value of money, 
Okay, that's an important lesson to learn for yourself by just getting out there and just buying things. Maybe not at the moment, but definitely when things calm down. Okay, so distance, speed and time. You might be thinking, what has this got to do with that? That's a completely different topic. Well, it's not. Speed is a compound measure. Okay, that means it involves other bits of measurement as well. And the measurements it involves is distance and time. And all speed is, it's the total distance travelled in a set time. So you give it a time. So, for example, this car is travelling at 100 miles per hour. What that means is every hour this car at its current speed will go 100 miles. Okay, pretty fast. It looks like a pretty fast car to me. So 100 miles every hour. That's all that means for that car. That's all speed is. So thinking similar, if I know it goes 100 miles in one hour, work out some different distances and times for me. Work out some different pairs. So do you know 200 miles? How long would it go, take to go 200 miles? How long would it, how far would it go in four hours? It's the same thing. It's just a table that we used before, but instead of amount and price, we've got distance and time. It's the same thing. If you can do this stuff, you can do distance, speed and time. You don't need to confuse yourself with a formula. You can just use these tables. And the GCSE questions are designed this way, to work well with this method. So just write a few times now. Any times you can for that one. You can put those on the chat, see how complicated you can get. And then I'll give you the challenge question for this one. One of the people that got those ones right as well. Brilliant work. Oh, raise 10. Unbelievable work. Fantastic work for that one for getting the 30 box question right. Outstanding. Okay, brilliant. So we're getting some answers for that. So now using your answers, this is a kind of challenge question. So I want to know, how long would it take to travel 180 miles? How long would it take to travel 180 miles? Okay, big tip. I would definitely put that into minutes. So I would say to start with, You've got 100 miles in 60 minutes. Okay, so can you get 180 miles? Okay, not the easiest one, but if you, you, if you did this using your little formula triangle there, you would really, really struggle with it. And we said just work out any ones you can. So just work out different amounts to try and get you all the way to 180 miles. Okay, so we start this is just about as hard as you will ever get with these as well. 
Okay, in terms of the one you need to work either with or without a calculator, this is as hard as they will ever give you. Okay, there's some really good ones people worked out there. If you can work out 10 miles, that's nice work. If you've got your, hour, if you've got your answers in minutes as well, if you posted that, can you think what would that be in hours and minutes as well? Could ask for either. Could ask for hours and minutes or just minutes. Okay, let's have a look then. So, we've got 100 miles in 60 minutes, so I'm going to work my way up. Well, you know what? I'm going to get as close as I can, so I'm going to say 200 miles. 200 miles is going to give me 120 minutes. So, I'm almost there, because I've got, but I'm a bit too far, aren't I? So, I need to take 20 miles off. Okay, now, surely I can get 20 miles quite easily if I've got 200 miles, okay? Or maybe you found 10 miles first, but 200 miles. So let's do 10 miles, because a lot of you might have done that. So 10 miles, divide that by 6, will be 6 minutes. So 20 miles is going to be 12 minutes. So I could then take this 12 minutes off the 200 to give me 108 minutes. Or, in hours and minutes, it's going to be 60 minutes in one hour, so one hour, and then I've got 48 minutes left. Okay, so there's different ways to do it. I've probably done that a different way to how you've done it, but it always, always works. As long as you are dividing and multiplying, you'll always get to the right answer with this. So don't make any mistakes, and please convert everything to minutes or hours, whatever you want to be working in. Avoid decimals with time, because it's really difficult. Because if you say half a minute or half an hour is 30 minutes, a calculator, if you half it, half one, it will give you 0.5. It will say it's 50 minutes, but that's not right. So you've got to be really careful with time. Okay, so those people, they got those right. Brilliant. Okay, this question comes up in an exam, in a GCSE exam, on the higher paper or the foundation paper. There are going to be lots and lots of people either leaving it blank completely or making silly mistakes using a formula triangle. We haven't used that once. I have not told you any formula for distance, speed and time, and yet we're answering these questions brilliantly. So, I'm going to have a go at a few of these now. Okay, I just want you to fill in the gaps. So I'm telling you the distance is 30 miles in one hour. I want you to tell me how far in five hours. So we've got nine of these to fill in the gap. They get quite tricky at the end. I'll try to go through, through, through a full range. So can you fill in those gaps with those question marks? Some of these you might want to do straight away in your head. Some of them will need some more work, writing down some more tables, like the kind of thing we've got on the board there. Okay, so nine questions to have a go out there. You're doing really well with this. Okay, and I'm trying to show you a different way of learning this, which will help you with other areas in maths as well. So please stick with this. The formula triangle is there. If you, if you can use it and you're getting the right answers, not a problem. But this will help with loads of other things in maths, like the top banana question and the shaky shake questions. So it's really, really useful to do this. Okay, this is how I teach it to my year 11s. This is how I also teach it to people that are maybe not got the GCSE the first time round, where I say, well, let's try this. This works really well. Okay, so nine questions to have a go at, and then we'll look at some more worded ones. Uh, let me know if you've got any problems at all. If you're posting answers, well, if you want to put your name so I can give you a shout out as well. Uh, I recognise a lot of people, I can't remember all your names though. Uh, Daniel, 100%, well done again, excellent work. So I've worked out one minute there, okay, you get messy, so they'll avoid. When one minute was 1.6666666666666, lots of sixes there, appreciate that. Technically, you should have had a seven at the end of your sixes there, because uh, that would have rounded up. But uh, they, they avoid stuff like that, so they give you easier questions and exams in terms of the numbers. Okay, please let me know if you've got any problems with this at all.
Que no gane Pablos al final. Uh, Somebody asks if I do lessons every day. Uh, I do this level lessons, so GCSE Key Stage 3 on uh, Mondays. Tuesday is Key Stage 1, so kind of age 5 plus. And then uh, the Friday, le uh, Thursday lessons is Key Stage 2, so kind of years 4, 5 and 6. But they can get pretty tricky as well, those lessons. Uh, and all the other lessons I've done, you can still watch on the Facebook page as well. There's loads on there since we've locked down. I, I'm a teacher, my college is closed, so I'm, uh, as well as doing my work, I look to do that. I've still got some time to plan some lessons for you guys that haven't got school to go to. Key stage four lesson. Key stage four would be GCSE as well, key stage three and key stage four, uh, all, all together. So this is key stage four now, this is the... They're the same. Key stage 3 and key stage 4 for me. I don't like the names of different stages in maths. When you're ready for it, you're ready for it. So, someone in year 6 doing this lesson now, brilliant. Okay? You do maths, so you enjoy it, can do it, but are still challenged by it. Okay? There's lots of things that should be taught a lot earlier, in my opinion, in primary school to help you with when you get to high school. So, there's a few changes, some normal stuff that you'd be taught, but that's just what I think can help you understand maths a lot better. Can you help me how to spell congratulations? Con first. Yep. And then grat. Grat. Yeah, you can spell that bit. And then o. Uh, okay, hold and on. Then nations. Okay, there's a challenge question on the board if anyone's finished all those. I've no idea whether that's uh, what the answer is. And I also have not made those numbers that are going to be particularly nice. So I just want to see how you can uh, work with that. Which is faster, 3 kilometres in 105 minutes or 800 metres in half an hour. Okay, see if you can work that out and give a good reason for which one is faster.
four hours. So draw pictures on the ones with gaps. Yeah. Okay, any help at all? Yeah, the first one is definitely uh, so I'll just give you a few answers just to check you're doing the right thing. So this one, you would have to times it by 5 to 150 miles. And this one, if you go up to 45 to 90 to 180, you are doubling and doubling again. So it's four hours. So you've got four hours without 150 miles for that one there. Good. The answer's in uh, a couple of minutes. Uh, remember, there's a challenge question on the board there as well, which is faster, three kilometres in 105 minutes or 800 metres in half an hour. Uh, and then we'll go through a few answers on the board as well. So number two. If you start with 45 miles, is one hour. Remember, we're trying to get to 180 miles. Okay? So, I'm going to double to 90 miles first. Which is going to be two hours. It's going to take you twice as long. And if I know two hours is 90 miles, then surely 180 miles is going to be four hours, because it's double that one. So I can just double up in my table to get to 180 miles in four hours. So just use these tables. Write the tables out and just start writing out the values you need. Some of you might skip straight to the answer for some of them. That's absolutely fine. Okay, you'll see with some of the exam ones that that can be quite difficult to do though. Has anyone worked out the challenge question yet? Tricky, tricky, tricky. I'm seriously that many sharp pencils. There's eight. Daddy, somebody's answered to the challenge mm -hmm. question. 800 meters.
I don't one doesn't get the last one. At how do you know? At all. Okay, right, let's go through these. In the middle while we're those, let's go through these. I'm gonna go through the last one and go through question seven and we'll look at the challenge question as well, which looks really tough. Uh, okay, so uh, put some answers on the board. If I know, we'll go through these first. So question seven, okay, we're going to, from one hour to three and a half hours. So the key one for me is to work out half an hour first. So half an hour would be four kilometers, and then half hour to get to three and a half hours. Maybe you've gone from one hour to three hours, would be three lots of eight, which is 24. Then you've got to add your four onto the 24 to give you 28 for three and a half hours. We are going to 15 minutes. So the first thing to do is to say, well, that's in minutes. I am changing this to minutes, definitely. I'm changing this to, in fact, we'll go one hour first. So one hour is going to be this divided by three. So that's two meters in one hour. Okay? So that is two meters in 60 minutes. And we're trying to get to 15 minutes. So we could go 30 minutes would be one meter. And then to get from 30 to 15 minutes, you're going to half that, so it's half a metre, which is 0.5 metres, or maybe 50 centimetres, whatever you prefer. So we're just using our system to get there. Find one hour first, then change to minutes. It makes a big difference. I'll just show you the answers and we'll go to the challenge question. So those are the ones I've got there. Uh, hopefully those are correct. Let me know if they're not. I've done this uh, fairly fast, a bit short on time, but uh, 150 miles, four hours, one and a half hours there, or if you've got 90 minutes, that's absolutely fine. Uh, 15 miles, 70 miles, 30 meters, 28 kilometers, 48 miles, and 50 centimeters or 0.5 centimeters there. Up to you what you write down. Okay, so the challenge question. So this is more like real life, because I've, I've picked out some numbers, not particularly sure whether they're going to be nice or not, and we're going to deal with it, we're going to work out who went faster out these two things here. So we want to get everything the same, okay? So what I would probably do is I would say, well, you know, I'm going to work out how far it takes them to go one kilometre, to go one kilometre. So this one here, to go one kilometre, if they go three kilometres in 105, Okay, to get to one kilometer, I'm going to have to divide this by three. Okay, which does go quite nicely. Three, if you did a quick bus stop method, we're going to do some division at some point as well in probably a key stage two lesson. Three into ten goes three, remainder one. Three into fifteen goes five. So 35 minutes. Okay, so this one, one kilometer, 35 minutes. So I'm going to get this to one kilometer as well, which is a thousand meters. So I know 800, 800 meters, so that one's done. 800 meters equals 30 minutes. So I'm going to get to 1,000, so I need to find 200 meters. So I could go, well, 400 meters is 15 minutes. So 200 meters is going to be half of that, 7.5 minutes. So one kilometer is going to be this and this, which is 37.5 minutes. So those are my two options. So the first one, one kilometre in 35 minutes. The second one, one kilometre in 37.5 minutes. So which one is faster? Don't look at the bigger number. This is faster. If I'm going one kilometre in 35 minutes, that is faster than this person. I'm getting there faster. Okay, so difficult question, but you can still use this method. It's brilliant. You just use your proportions. Get that however you want, and just be careful with your times and divide it. Okay, you probably get a calculator for that question if you want one as well. Okay, right, so we're going to look now at two questions, more like exam questions, then we'll look at the exam questions after that. So, first one. So, a cyclist is travelling at an average speed of 22 miles per hour. How long does it take her to travel? A, 66 miles, B, 44 miles. 
Okay, so average speed of 22 miles per hour. All you are looking at here is really your distance, speed, and time questions. So these are the simplest ones you're going to get. So average speed just means they're probably going when you go up a hill, you slow down. When you go down, you speed up. So it's just your speed. So don't pay much attention to average speed. It still just means speed as far as you're concerned. Okay, so two quick questions there. This is as simple as you are going to get, but you do get ones this easy. So good question here, 37.5 minutes, that does mean there, you're right, that means 37 